If you come across a construction site in the middle of the woods, just turn around. It all started with a chase through the woods behind my house. A little after lunch, my golden retriever, Benny, caught the trail of something he liked and took off like a bullet towards the tree line, nose focused on the dirt like the coonhound he wishes he was. I was on the back porch reading and watched Benny take off, figuring he would be back any minute. He did this all the time, it was in his blood, and living in a small mountain town didn't help. Benny didn't come back this time though. For 15 minutes I poked my head up from the pages of my book to see if Benny came slumming out from the trees with half a dead rabbit in his mouth. Then I heard a bark, high pitched, short, and shrill. Benny was in trouble. I leaped upwards into action. The novel dropped to my feet with pages bent and splayed. I ran down the stairs of the porch and towards the trees. I heard the shrill bark again, more distant than before, and broke into a sprint. Branches and leaves whipped at my face and chest. I didn't care. Something was wrong with Benny. At some point, I noticed that giant yellow warning no trespassers signs were plastered on tree trunks. If I wasn't so focused, I might have wondered why these signs were posted on public land. The Fall Creek Forest was one of the largest in the Tri-County area. No one owned it but the state. I kept sprinting through the saplings and brambles. I had cuts all over my forearms, but I didn't care. I hadn't heard Benny make a noise in several minutes. Instead, I heard a constant thump that grew louder. Sweat dripped down my face and back. I tried calling Benny's name over and over, but soon had to stop for fear of passing out from lack of oxygen. Then, without notice, the trees cleared away, revealing an open area, and I tripped over my own velocity. I shielded my face with my arms and slammed into the packed earth. With a groan, I looked up as little white stars receded from my vision. I was in a construction site, in the middle of the woods. Trees completely surrounded the area like silent guardsmen. There was empty machinery scattered across the compacted dirt. A bulldozer, a crane, a few trucks were hauling dirt or chunks of rock. In the center, a massive cylindrical tentpole-like object was lifting itself into the air via hydraulic pistons. Then it dropped to the earth. Thump. The impact made the ground shudder underneath me. Whatever this device was, I had not seen anything like it before. If you've ever played Half-Life 2, it looked like the pistons you have to activate to scare away the ant lions. That was the best comparison my brain could make in those stressful moments. Before my mind could interpret whatever was going on here, I heard another short shrill bark, much closer than before, followed by a guttural moan. Benny was close. I ran across the opening, past the giant piston, which again raised itself and dropped to the earth with a loud thump. I entered the tree line opposite of where I entered, and continued my sprint towards Benny's cry. The thumping seemed to continue everywhere around me. After about 30 more seconds, I stumbled into another clearing, almost identical to the one before. Some trucks, orange cones, and a giant silver piston raising and dropping itself in endless routine. The only reason I didn't think I had gone full circle was the fact that there wasn't a bulldozer this time. Only a few feet away from the piston was Benny, moaning quietly. He was ravaged from battle with some sort of forest creature. His yellow hair was matted with his blood. A giant claw mark was carved across his abdomen. Three giant slashes, velvet red in color. Benny's back right leg was broken and mangled. Breaths came out in short wheezes. He was at death's door. I dropped to my knees and cradled Benny's body, sobbing uncontrollably. Through my tears and anguish, I noticed something else. Some sort of black, oily substance was mixed with the matted fur and blood. I touched my fingers to it in curiosity despite my heaving sobs. It was slick and shiny, the same consistency as the blood leaking from Benny's wounds. Freeze! Put your hands behind your head! The voice broke the repetitiveness of the thumping like a sonic boom. I did what I was told and turned around, tears still glistening in my eyes. There were four soldiers in front of me. One had what appeared to be a bazooka strapped to his back. The others were fully combat ready and had their assault rifles pointed at me. A fifth soldier stepped in between them and approached me. He had a stern look on his grizzled face, that is, until he saw Benny's mangled body behind me. Then it turned into a sour smile. This is a fresh kill which means we must be right on its trail. The soldier turned to me. Sorry about your dog. Think you can help us out? 
I cock my head in curiosity and begin to listen to the soldier's story. Thank you all so much for listening. If you enjoyed this story, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and share to help feed the dark machine. I try to post stories every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you have a story that you would like me to read, send me a DM on Twitter, at EvilOrphan, or to the email in the description below.